Hi, everyone. Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 10, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Welcome to another episode of the Life More Abundantly show, where we share personal testimonies and cover various topics designed to point the viewer to the more abundant life found in Jesus Christ. It is my honor tonight to be able to present the topic of men's mental health. All of us know some man that is special in our lives, whether it's our fathers, husbands, sons, brothers, or just some brother in Christ. We want to be sure to encourage our men to seek the mental health that is necessary. And we're going to be talking about that tonight. And I have a very special guest that is more than capable of helping this conversation. And that is none other than Gary Graham, who has a private counseling practice called Graham Counseling and Consulting. He's a native of Brooklyn, New York. He loves his church, family, friends, and community. Gary's extensive education, coupled with his experience as an executive in the healthcare industry and within faith-based organizations, supports his expertise in his extensive counseling work as he educates about public health. Currently, Gary is pursuing his doctorate at the SUNY Downstate School of Public Health, he also holds a master's degree in rehabilitation counseling from New York University and a master's degree in public health with SUNY Downstate School of Public Health. His doctoral emphasis is on community and immigrant health as he continues to impact the healthcare and mental health industries. Gary is joyfully married to his beautiful wife, Nilsa, and they have one beautiful son attending college. Before we, just before we get to our guest, I just want to highlight our inspirational t-shirt store, Tees That Testify. It was founded in October of 2020 by yours truly. Tees That Testify is an inspirational online t-shirt store that allows the wearer to give a silent witness to their faith in Jesus Christ. We have various sizes of short and long sleeve t-shirts for adults, children, and toddlers. We have face masks and also tote bags as well. So please go to Tees That Testify. The um, website is right there and you can basically log on and purchase your order today. We have various collections, including the Coming Again collection, which talks about the second coming. We have the Justice Run Collection, which talks about social justice. We have the True Love Does Not Hurt Collection, which addresses domestic violence. And each one has a scripture attached to it. So we want to encourage you to please go to Tees That Testify. Of course, the second coming just proclaims that Jesus is coming again, but the others also do have scripture attached to them. So we want to encourage you to go there and place your order today. I believe that our special guest is ready at this time, and I would like to welcome once again, Gary Graham. Hi there, Gary. How are we doing tonight? Okay. I'm doing well. I'm stuck. So you know oh. how that is. Listen, yes. what's up? You should, you should introduce me as the one uh -oh. and only. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on Graham. now. What's up? I mean, we know oh, we, we, we've known each other too, too long. We've known each other from Bethel, y'all. Right. So like it's, 30, it's all 30 good. years. 30 years. How you doing today? Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so honored. I'm so yeah. honored to have you. You know, we were talking earlier. It's interesting what the, the direction that God guides people to. Mm -hmm. And just to see what the Lord is doing through you with um, addressing various issues of counseling, grief counseling and all of that. And we're just really, I'm just so thankful to God to see what he's doing in it's, and through you. It's and funny, through your, mm -hmm. you, you've been very flexible. Uh, so <laughs> it's funny. So, you know, I always like when I do these shows to tell the reality of it because, um, you know, my brother Pat yes. is um, doing my, grief counseling group right now mm -hmm. as we speak mm -hmm. but you and i from last year we were yes. supposed to hook up and i had an emergency and now that yes. i 
know how to handle that because I have a staff or whatever. But okay. my mom, my mom and my wife always told me that people when they call in, they they call them for you, Gary. They're not calling for Marcina. They're not calling for Pat. So the grief counseling was doing so good. Mm -hmm. I had circled today as a day off. Okay. But we wanted to keep continuing. So I appreciate the first five minutes. That's why nobody saw me. Yeah. Here because I was over on the other side introducing everybody. So big up to Pat tonight. Oh, yes. they, they're doing the five stages of grief. Grief. Pat just finished his counseling yes. uh, degree. And um, we're trying to find a little uh, niche for him. Oh, I can't um, wait. Yeah, he's good at what he does. He, oh, he's yeah. very good at what he does. Yes. So we're happy uh, it's, it's all coming together. I'm going to look forward to that. Um, I'm just, and I appreciate that because, you know, when it comes to mental health, it, you know, the mental health and well being of clients and patients is definitely top priority. And, you know, God knows when everything is supposed to happen. And thankfully, you were available tonight. And I know I was praying. I said, oh, dear God, please don't call me with no cancellation. Yeah. Ah! Yeah. But I understand, though. I do. It, yeah. it definitely was an emergency. So we're going to talk tonight about men's mental health. Yep. And the first question to ask is, let's see. I got, I got a list here. What led you to pursue the mental health profession? Um, well, if you look on some of the, my other interviews, um, you know, when I first came out of college, I did not want to be a mental health person. I was doing everything. So the first job I got was as a employment specialist. And so that led into being a vocational counselor. So I used to find jobs and help people with their career paths to, um, get employed. They were either um, disabled, uh, substance abusers. And so I just began to get certificates and stack on to that. So, you know, I had to eat, you know, and uh, I was hired for that. And um, so I've been doing this since really 1996. And I, I want to give everybody some type of um, timeline. The day I the day that I interviewed for my first real job was the day of the Oklahoma City bombing. So that gives you an idea wow. of that, that has been a long time that I've been doing that. But the magic really happened, Marcina, uh, three years ago. I uh, got an opportunity. It was forced mm. to get my own uh my own business and then after six months and some people will understand this term i got paneled or insurance companies took my uh license and that's when um my career really took off you know uh so uh always been mental health mixed it in with hospital administration uh consulting always been a consultant because i always preached um but now everything has kind of flourished um, to where I can make a, an impact. You know, it's just, it's just an interesting thing how the Lord has taken all three of you, because I, we know about your trend brothers, mm -hmm. Paul and Patrick, and how the Lord has led you to minister in the area of counseling, right. where they, and where they, where the both of them minister in the pulpit and, and thank God that he led you in that, in that direction. Why is men's mental health so important? Well, you know, men are um, painted as strong and painted as leaders. And um, I'm going to take into effect um, whoo, what's happening now, excuse me, um, in uh, Ukraine. Uh, that uh, President Zelensky has told everybody to bear arms and join us in the resistance, almost like Star Wars and Putin is um, Darth Vader. And you know, who doesn't love rebels? Who doesn't love people who will stand up for their country? Hmm. And, and it's just like, let's all bear arms, you know, uh, fight with me. 
and men has always been painted mm -hmm. as the stronger of the two. With that being said, um, our screws need to be tight. Mm -hmm. Our minds need to be right. focused. And um, your men's health, as with everybody, mm -hmm. um, I'm not even gonna say especially men, but men's health, um, all our, our mental health has to be focused. Mm -hmm. There is something that I've learned that when you're in the Air Force and you have a target, and if you're off by one degree of that mm -hmm. target, you end up moving further and uh, further away mm -hmm. from that target mm -hmm. while you fly towards that direction. So um, mental health is to remain focused, do not waver in any degree, mm -hmm. and um, take what God has given you and tune in the positive and tune out the negative. And you know, that really reminds me of the verse in scripture that says, be sober, be vigilant, vigilant. Mm -hmm. because That's your adversary to the devil is walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We're in a spiritual battle every single day. Every day. Every day. And the Bible also says, let this mind be in you, which was mm -hmm. also in Christ Jesus. Yep. So our mental health does matter to the Lord. Sure does. It's important. The Bible says, I wish above all things that you should prosper and be in health. Yep. Even as our souls prosper. So it's not just about physical health. It also includes mental health. Yes, and, it does. And as you were saying, since men are looked to to be the leaders in the family and in the community, their mental health is a vital and should be of vital importance to us. Yep. And sleep. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> yes. Most important thing is sleep. Mm -hmm. What are the mental health challenges that men specifically face? Oh man, uh, the the number one is uh, being outside of your relationship with your creator. Um, that's the number one thing. Uh, your higher power. Um, I believe in my relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what I have chosen and that's what I will be. But there are other religions, whether you're Muslim or you are Jewish faith, but those are the main ones or some higher power you believe in. We need to remain committed to that. Uh, the second thing is uh, commitment to your family. So, um, I'll share with you, I was in an awkward position uh, this year, this month, actually, uh, Marcina, um, this the last 28 years, mm. 28 years, I'm sorry, 28 days, my dear wife uh, went to um, be a travel nurse. Mm. And, you know, and I, I thought it was very important for her to go out mm. and see what it's all about. Wow. You had to. And on the flip side, as you know, probably know, you know me personally, uh, our son was um, at school. Yes. And uh, we have a situation here that mom is uh, dealing with Alzheimer's and what have you. Mm. So, and with all that, you know, uh, my wife's sister, she comes over, we have home health aides or what yeah. have you. And, but at the end of the day, I miss them. Mm-hmm. And I sometimes I feel alone. Mercy. You know, no matter how great uh, my sister-in-law is to me, because I have no sister, so I, you know, mm. you know, and we we've been cool like that for the last thirty days. But you know, this family intimacy comes in when there's family stress. Mm. So, you know, uh, my patterns or our patterns were uh, moved out of the way. So, her and myself. And Nilsa and, uh, well, not so much Tone, we all kind of had to kind of like adjust our days, you know? And then, you know, which was, you know, my prayer time had to change. My exercise time had to change. You know, my eating had to change, but my focus had to remain the same, you know? So um, with that, as a man in my family, you know, you are expected to always be focused. The bill still has to be paid. 
you still have to be loving. You know, when I turned over the night, I had to call. You know, that is the consistency that people look for. And uh, it's, you know, our lives are not scripted and tomorrow is not promised right. to anybody. So we have to live our life day by day, chapter by chapter, mm -hmm. verse by verse, word by word. Mm -hmm. And um, if we come off focus, it's all right to take a day. Like, I'm not doing anything today. I'm going to sleep. Mm. You know, I'm not going to take this call. Right. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, today, I'm going to watch uh, 007 all day. I'm going to watch my favorite show, and I'm going to binge all day so I can get out of the madness so I can remain focused most mm. of the time. You know, I hope that, that, answers, I hope that, that answers your question. That's, oh, yes. And, and, and self-care is very important. Mm -hmm. And seeing all of the adjustments, I know that, you know, I thank God for the husband that that I have, that, that we're doing this parenting thing of a special needs son together. And I am so thankful for him. And his mental health is just as important as mine mm -hmm. and because we share that responsibility. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to do that. Um, what are the challenges that happen in trying to help men see the need of mental health services is has is it changing? Are are there more men seeking those services, or do they still need that encouragement? Uh, that's an excellent question. Um, I find that men does not come or go for mental health or counseling unless they're forced to. So uh, usually in a marriage, is usually the woman that calls me and uh, they're at their last straw and they the husband says, yes, I will come. But just to say they do that so they don't have to um, deal <clears throat> with um, the fallout. So it's very rare that we have any man that steps up to get any counseling. Unfortunately, the second part a lot of men sees me is because they're in some type of uh, um, justice uh, supervision. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, they have to come because they have a DUI, a DWI, or they have an ACS case, they have an anger management case. Mm -hmm. Very rare that I get men that comes to me. And then when I get them, they don't last that long. Mm -hmm. So the, the only men that last long with me are little men, boys. Mm -hmm. They stay with me for a long time and their parents send them to me. So um, I still struggle with getting men. Um, when I do get men, I'll admit to you as a therapist and a counselor, I mm -hmm. struggle because mm -hmm. sometimes I see a lot of them mm -hmm. in, in me. And um, but, you know, the fight goes on right. uh, for that, that it's OK to talk to somebody. You know, it's OK to say to you, to me, it's like my wife has made me angry. Or my family has made me angry. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay that they, somebody has been promoted over me, and I don't know how to uh, work on that. Mm -hmm. It's okay to say that no matter if I put my suit on and I go to church, I still feel less desirable or mm. I feel less strong. Have mercy. You know, all of those things are factors that men should talk about. So. Um, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot of machismo. There's a lot of uh, uh, strength involved. Mm. And uh, there's a lot of um, self, um, self reflection mm -hmm. that uh, doesn't take place. And yet, if we look at, the, at men in the Bible, we see men that were, I think, very capable of expressing the various emotions sadness, mm -hmm. grief hurt, anger. You, we see that all in the Psalms. We see it in Jeremiah. We see it in Isaiah. We see it in, in various parts of the Bible where men were able to express those things and still be considered men. And okay. yet it's a challenge in this day and age for that to be done. But we still, we still encourage and we okay. still, and we still push through. Now, 
when it comes to the signs of of mental health needing to be you know to be taken care of for example depression and stuff like that how does it manifest itself from a male point of view well you know it it manifests i don't would, wouldn't put it in a male point of view but it's more demonstrative you know so you hear like oh oh a girl is crying in the bathroom or crying herself to sleep as a depression uh sign but there's men that take showers and cry in the bathroom and there mm -hmm. are men that goes to bed crying have mercy to sleep you know you know you're my sister i'm your brother our mother dies oh, well. you, you you know you decide to cry at the funeral i decide mm -hmm. to cry in the car okay but the, but the end result is that you know we cried mm -hmm. you know uh just like Death has no um, prerequisite mm -hmm. to put anybody in the ground. Uh, depression does not have a prerequisite on how you act. Now it may vary, you know, people may act out, say, well, you know, he's always mad because he lost somebody. You know, I just don't think that sometimes, Marcina, that um, we look for those signs, you know, you come out the bathroom, your eyes are red. You know, uh, I could count the times that I've seen or heard my father cry. You know, and um, and I think it's okay for men to cry. Yes. You know, you know, um, in happy times, and um, and in bad times. Yes. You know, it's okay to tell people that I miss you. And most important is okay to tell people that, you know, if I'm a man and I say to you, oh, man, I really appreciate this interview, mm -hmm. whatever, it doesn't mean it's no more than that. I, I do appreciate you. Right. So, you know, I say that and um, it brings a bond of uh, it just makes it better. And I right. try to speak in, in, in plain English. Mm -hmm. When you show your appreciation, where somebody says, you know, how's your day today? And said, look, mm -hmm. uh, I'll say something my mother-in-law says that I use and you get it, hey, you say, hey, Gary, how you doing? I said, well, you know, Marcina, I've seen better days, mm -hmm. you know, because you know, nobody can be happy all the time. Right. You know what I'm mm -hmm. you know, Oh, I'm not myself today, right. you know? And so I try to press that mm -hmm. for, um, the people that I talk to. Can I also ask, would um, the substance abuse, mm -hmm. we see that quite often mm -hmm. with, of course, both men and women, but I almost wonder sometimes if men seem to turn to those things more often as far as masking issues of mental health or something of oh, that. Yeah. What, what role oh, yeah. does that play in mental health? Well, you know, when you get depressed or you have some type of anxiety, uh, people act out. Um, you know, when we were growing up, you hear, um, you know, one of my favorite shows growing up was listening on the radio to Unshackled. And usually people would yeah. talk about uh, their drinking mm -hmm. and the bottle. People drink their, um, their hurt away mm -hmm. or their stresses away. But it's the same thing. People overeat. You know, people um, anger their family. They hit members of their family or mm. they speak down condescending to people mm. as a way of a coping mechanism. You know, they don't know how to speak to anybody, mm. you know, but they have a loving heart and you don't understand what it is. You know, who hurts you mm. so much? And sometimes people go to. Uh, smoking weed or marijuana and say, you know, this is what relaxes me. And then some people go to smoking or, you know, and just because somebody works out doesn't mean that uh, they use that to counteract. So these are no. coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And depending on the coping mechanism that you use, it either helps positive or negative mm -hmm. on what goes on. So that's why when people get hurt um, and they exercise 
and some people will lose weight. You know, sometimes I get people that they feel like they have been uh, talked down to or they have not been seen or they've been seen right through them or they've been unjustified. They apply for a loan or they apply for a job or they look for uh, a certain um, status in their school board or their church and they know they're qualified. And then they go back and said, well, they re-examine themselves and they change their look or they change their size or what have you. So every day there's an action and a reaction to do what you want to do. So some people drink, some people, some people smoke and they do that in excess. And when they do that in excess, it uh, exacerbates the issue more. And, you know, and certainly this is why we believe, you know, that the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Yeah. The sun go down on your wrath. You right. know, in other words, let's find healthier outlets to do that. Let's not destroy our body temples mm -hmm. with drugs and alcohol and so forth. Let's instead get the mental health services that we need. And then, you know, based on proper evaluation, if the person needs meds, by all means. Mm -hmm. But, you know, other than that, we want to help the person to, to, um, to seek the better way because I've heard that some people use substances as, as a form of self-medicating. You heard, you heard, and you, you heard, and you're right. Mm -hmm. You heard, and you're, and you're right. You know, people use sex as self-medicating. Have mercy. They use drugs, uh, cocaine, mm -hmm. marijuana, food, even mm -hmm. the, um, you know, the oxycontin to uh, self-medicate, all to dumb down or to um, uh, to make uh, the issue less important at that time. So, uh, you know, those are the things you're absolutely right on that. And unfortunately, um, in some communities, more than other, it's readily available not only it's readily available, it's readily available in abundance. And not only that is readily available and readily available in abundance, it is also readily available in abundance uh, mixed with poison. And uh, that's why they call it overdose deaths. And that's how they signify it. But they're not overdose deaths, they were poisoned. A lot wow. of people are poisoned. And mm. so, so do you say, oh, Gary took oxycodone pills. He took too much. Nobody trying to overdose on pills unless you're committing suicide, which is Mercy. another thing, is just that you were poisoned. Your 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 marijuana was laced with fentanyl or Ooh. you know, or what have you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those are the issues at hand. So we have to call it for uh what it is. Yes. Absolutely. And um, looking at this question here, how can we help the men in our lives get the help that they need? Um, make it a priority. You know, you really have to sit down and say, um, you need to talk it through. You know, uh, every year people say, you know, make sure you get your colonoscopy. You know, make sure you go to the doctor. Make sure you get your eyes checked. You know, um, just because you have a counselor, you don't have to see me or a counselor every week. You can see them once a month, uh, once every quarter. You know, look at us here in the Northeast. You know, we have four true seasons. You know, uh, your city, you, you probably won't see snow unless, uh, you know, maybe once every four years. You know, I can guarantee you that I will see snow every year, hmm. right? And at my age now, and you, and, and I, I put this out there, you know, I'm a different man at 30 than a different man at uh, 50 plus. Hey. And, and I was like, mm -mm. I, I'm not spending another year in, year in New York. That's why I'm now going to be a snowbird. I'm moving to Birmingham, <laughs> you know. 
for four weeks out of the year. I'm not doing it. I hear you. Know you. I mean? Right. So you. our our shift change, and when you talk about it, you know, uh, when your wives talk to your husband and you sit down, and the 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 best question that I get uh, from people who loves me is, "Are you all right?" And is there is there something wrong? And then when you get those questions, and you answer, you you really want to hear the answer because I'm gonna give you the answer, you know, because that helps me heal. You know, it's like, well, you know, what's wrong? Well, you know, I paid this bill, and I um, paid ahead, and instead of putting it on the principal, it hits the finance charge, and that's getting on my nerve. Now, isn't that better? You know, instead of just keeping it to yourself and throwing rocks at your family or whatever, and that person empathizes to you. It's like, yo, that's messed up, G. You know, mm-hmm. and as I said, I said, you know, that doesn't bother me. But what really bothers me is that I got to get on the phone and I got to straighten this out. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I thought I was adulting by uh, putting this on auto pay and we were moving in the right direction. And I look on there and the principal has not moved. Uh-oh. That's a problem, you know? So, you know, I you know, I got my frog face on or whatever. And then when you talk about it, your frog face turns into a smiley face after all, because you talked about it. And it's a legit something legit that you know that you should get upset about. You know, it, it's fine. Yes, indeed. And it's important when we see the men in our lives going through these things. I know, you know, from from my perspective, it takes it takes wisdom, ladies, to know how to approach the situation. Um, a lot, a lot of wisdom, but it is so worth it because we we don't want our men to suffer, and right. especially during this this pandemic and 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 now a war overseas, we have a lot of people that are just, you know, the Bible says men's hearts are failing them for fear. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. Now, we know that that is, of course, both male and female, but the Bible does says men's hearts are failing them for fear. So, yes, our men can be afraid. Our men can go through these things. We just want to encourage them to get the help that's needed. I mean, there's, you can get online counseling now. You can, you can, you know, people can set up Zoom meetings now. If you if you're not able to leave home or if you can't leave your office or whatever, there's mm-hmm. all kinds of ways to get mental health services. And I want to encourage everyone, but especially our brothers, we need you. Right. We need you as our fathers. We need healthy fathers. We need healthy husbands. We need healthy sons and and brothers. We really care about you. And we want you to be in good health from head to toe. Well, you know, uh, there's this commercial that comes on here in the, the Northeast, and they show a bunch of people, and they're like going to say something, and then they stop before they say something. And um, I, I'll just bring this up. Uh, I'm not going to go into it. You know, my brother, uh, I spoke, we almost speak every day. And um, I said to myself, I said, man, you don't seem like yourself. And he said to me, I'm not. And he said, what's going on? Now, I'll tell you, he's okay. And it was something very small. Mm -hmm. Or let me, something I consider very small. Mm -hmm. But he was able, I was able to speak on that right then and there and let him know that, you know, you're not alone, uh, what you're saying. It's validated because what mm-hmm. he said, I said, I think of the same stuff too. So when you talk to somebody and they ask them what's wrong and they, and I'll go back to the finance charge thing. And then you say, you know, Gary, that same thing happened to me. And then you either will say, this is how I dealt with it. Or I said, man, I'm dealing with it now. I, I, I don't, and you know, maybe we could find a way to make it happen. Mm-hmm. So, um, You know, you always want somebody when you talk to is to say that, you know, um, that is real. Oh, you know, it's sunny today and, you know, uh, it's a little too hot or uh, I something strange to me. This phenomenon that still gets me is like, 
it's sunny here and it's cold as ice outside. Mm. It's beautiful outside, but the, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm I'm kind of sad about that, you know, or I wonder why that is. Or, you know, I had plans to go walking because I love walking, but it was a little bit too cold. And I'm a little disappointed in that, you know. The other day, I uh, bought myself a large cup. I, I just say a large drink. And I said I was going to put it in the refrigerator. I'm going to hit that up like about 6, 6.30 today. Girl, my I was putting it in the fridge, and that joint <laughs> fell and uh -oh. spilled on the floor. No. Yeah. And I was like to myself, you thought the only thing I didn't do is cry like a baby. Hmm. Like a little like a little boy. Like I you spill something at church and you just start crying. Because hmm. you know you can't get it back. You know what I mean? I'm not like going to the store and get that back. Gone. You yeah. know, I, your boy was grumpy for 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 a minute. So I try to talk to people to go through the emotion, go through what they feel. And I, I, I'll tell you, since I've been doing that, I've been able to uh, navigate my days a whole lot better. Um, nobody takes my time for me. Nobody. If I want to go to sleep, I'm going to go to sleep. If I don't feel like doing it, I'm not doing it. If I if 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 something is bothering me, I'm going to talk to somebody about it. And if I'm not going to talk to that person about it, I'm going to talk to my uh, my peer, counsel uh, therapist. I have two, um, and they're very good to me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They are female, so I'm gonna let you know that. Okay. Um, uh, one is for more clinical stuff. Uh, the other one is for like emotional stuff. So I, and you know, and I'm still not all right, even though I have because I know I know how to look and help myself. And but even though I'm not a hundred percent, I'm better than I was before. So it's all good. And I'm I'm glad to share that with everybody today. Yes, indeed. So one thing is validate their feelings. Correct. And I wrote down refer them to competent mental health services. Right. That's right. that's another thing. Yeah, so Everybody doesn't fit. You know, I'm a uh, 3% of the, uh, as a black male, they call me a unicorn because there's not a lot of black males. And uh, people will say, oh, you know, I picked you because you're a black Christian male. And I say to them, but that doesn't mean that I am uh, perfect for you. All it just means that I'm a black Christian male that is licensed to do this. But you know, I try to get the match. I try to get four weeks, and and then I try and reach out and try to make sure that if we don't work, that we send them to somebody else. So um, it's uh, it's hard. Um, one of the aspect as a um, therapist, um, I have people like to think that my hands are on other therapists and i was like i could refer them right away mm -hmm. but you know and uh, you know that's the you know that that's a, that comes on a case-by-case -case basis yes so. absolutely so i also wrote down because we're talking about how we can help as a community help our men organize online workshops and seminars well, you know, they're, they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a lot of schools and what they call continuing education units that you can find. Uh, there are shops and seminars. I, 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 this is one that we're doing. And I did one this weekend on domestic violence and trauma. Uh, it was really powerful. But, you know, you could go to uh, black mental health workshops. Just look in the Internet. It's it's there. It's worth it. Um, they speak about the same things and the same issues that we have. Right. Uh, I give you a case in point that I will talk about the next time and I will talk about now is that, you know, 
when you see the war uh, that's going on in Ukraine mm -hmm. and uh, the um, racist aspect of it that where you see that there's reporters empathizing that people like them are being bombed and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this is a civilized city. You know, those hurt mm. um, people of color, mm. so, you know, so, you know, because this war is in uh, the continent of Africa every day, oh, yes. you know, and in the Middle East. But for some, this one, and then, you know, what really hurt me to see all the African students, mm. what we have no idea what you're doing in the Ukraine from Africa. I don't know. We'll mm -hmm. leave it at that. But the fact that you imagine you go on a train and then you get dragged off a train because this, somebody uh, was identified as a more worthy citizen than you. Yo, there's a war going on. We all trying to get out. We all trying to do our thing. And so, you know, when you sit down and you have somebody that's like-minded, same age, same age area, same, you know, um, religious affiliation, you know, uh, we all in the same boats, someplace, somewhere, somehow, and we have to make it an opportunity to share those hurt experiences. So, um, Yes. You know, uh, I'm big over the last uh, couple of years that even if you don't get a therapist, that you get a chance to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And the person that you're talking to, that they are a good listener. Mm. That's, you yes. know, some, some people will just listen and watch it to you like, yeah, uh-huh, I mm. got you. No, you need somebody to really listen to you. And, you know, listening is a skill that doesn't get rewarded, but brings you a long way to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. So let's just briefly go over this. We have validate their feelings. We want to validate the feelings of our, of our brothers. Right. Refer them to competent mental health services. Correct. We can organize online workshops and seminars as a community. Easy. And be a good listener. Yep. Very important. Intentional listening. Yeah, you got to be. A, you you got to do that. That's very important. Yes. So. Yes, it um, is. And you know, uh, you know, it's more than mm-hmm and uh-huh, and it's you know, I hear you, and especially, you have to be a little bit more intentional because, you know, the most intimate part of counseling and therapy is, being in front of that person as a live person. You could touch them. You know, you can say something, you can see them shift. You can see me shift and people can see me shift. But, you know, if I take off my glasses, then you see the white of my eyes. Mm -hmm. Or um, some things I try to make you human. If you look over my back, shoulder, um, I humanize myself mm -hmm. because there's a picture that little girl is actually my wife. So, mm -hmm. you know, you want people to feel as human Mm. as possible yes. so i try to take the bot out of me and be as human as possible so listening is such a good thing and the way you respond to listening and then you know there's techniques that you can use so i'll just say go back to you go back to you know marcina that is a great mm -hmm. uh sweater combination that you have i see this week that you have closet doors but the other week you was had a different background and yeah. then, you know, and then you'll say, Oh, Gary, this is what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, observe whatever. And then you could, you could get anything out of anybody, yes. so, you know, and as a therapist, that alone takes energy. So does I talk to 10 to 15 people a day? Mercy. And, and sometimes I'm like, yo, I'm not doing it today. I, I, I'm just not, uh, I, you know, I, I, I need my engine to, to, mm -hmm. to, to go on. So, I'm telling you, therapists, they need rest days. They need somebody to talk to. It doesn't mean that people in the mental health professions are incompetent in what they're doing. They're very competent. It's yep. just that they realize the importance of self-care. Yep. Because while you're um, having people pour into you 
what they're going through and the hurts and so forth, you then have to have a healthy outlet mm -hmm. to empty that stuff out. So that's, that's very important. So I yep. absolutely appreciate you coming. Thank you so much for uh, sharing with us the perspective on men's mental health. We want to encourage our brothers out there, please, there is help available. We believe in prayer. We believe in the word of God. We also believe that the Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Nice. So please, we pray that you will be encouraged or share this broadcast with someone who needs mental health services, who is, you know, your dad or your husband or your son or, or, or just a brother in Christ that you're concerned about, your friend. We, we need that. And, you know, it's so interesting. I remember um, when, when Don Cornelius, when, when we heard about his passing, his tragic passing, and I'm thinking, whoa, you know, I, I had never heard of someone in their, in, in, you know, in their old age having these kind of, you know, having suicidal thoughts of any kind. Right. And that was, you know, later on it was revealed he was struggling with mental health. And I was like, oh, wow. You know, this was the one that presented himself so confidently. You know, he started Soul Train so that people could see a positive image of mm -hmm. young African-Americans because that was not happening at, at the time enough. And to, and to hear of that passing a few years ago, it, it really drove home to me the importance of mental health for our men of mm. all age groups and of all walks of life. So th thank you so much for, for sharing with us. Okay, my pleasure. And have and a good evening. And we're going to just bow for a brief word of prayer. Dear Lord, I pray that this broadcast has been a blessing and a help and an encouragement to everyone, but especially to our men. We ask, Lord, that you will be with us as parents, as spouses, as, as, as brothers and sisters in Christ, that if we see someone who is suffering, that we will be able to refer them to the competent help that they need. We know that you are our refuge and strength and a present help, but you have also given people the gift of counsel. And we ask, Lord, that you will please help people to seek those services as needed. In your precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I Amen. leave you with the words of John chapter 10, verse 10. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. God bless and keep you is our prayer. Have a good night. Good night.